Hi, I'm Jennifer. Welcome to the fourth lesson of the Love Your Cricut mini course. Today, we're going to talk about storing all of these tools and supplies for our crickets because they multiply. The more you use your cricket, the more stuff you collect. And the more stuff you have, the easier it is to get disorganized or worse yet, lost. And there is nothing like a lost tool to prevent you from crafting. I want you to be able to use your cricket whenever the fancy strikes you or whenever you have time. So organizing all of these things so that you can actually find what you want when you have the time to craft is so important. At this point, I've collected a fair amount of Cricut stuff and I have to take care that it is organized. So I've come up with a few ways, techniques, whatever, of storing and organizing my things. So let me show you how I personally organize my Cricut tools, my mats, my paper, and my vinyl. Use the tips you like for your own tools and supplies. Um, I've got tutorials on everything on my blog. So let's first talk about organizing your Cricut tools because there's really quite a few of them, aren't there? The first thing you're probably gonna need to store are these tools, and you need to get them organized too. So thankfully, we have plenty of tool storage on the Cricut machines. We've got this compartment here and our cup holder, but eventually you're gonna outgrow the storage or just need something else like me. So the first thing that I came up with was this super easy five minute craft organizer for storing tools and pens and everything. It's just cut up paper towels that I put into a basket and I put them at different angles for different size tools. I love this thing and I bet you could make one today if you want it. Super easy. And eventually I collected so many Cricut tools that I wanted to put them all together because they're really cute. So I painted this cute little pegboard and framed it. Isn't this adorable? So there's room for all of the tools that I use most. These are the Cricut scissors. I've lost the little holder. Yeah, that's really, that's, you see, I gotta be really careful because I lose stuff. Uh, the scraper, cooling tool, weeding tool, tweezers, spatula, and the paper piercer. So these are the things that I use the most of all the tools that I have. And I, I don't know, it's just really cute. I, I paint it to match my room. And the cool thing about this is that I can either hang it up because there is a hanger on the back, um, or I can move it around when I'm using it because it has a built-in stand from when it used to be a picture frame, right? And that's it. So cool. So, and I have a full tutorial on how to make this on my blog if it interests you. So I have yet another idea, and that is my maker mat. So this is my design and I share it freely on my blog. Um, and it, I made it on my maker, it was not difficult at all. So let me show you how this works. Close up this. So the idea is that it can be a dust cover. So it goes right over your machine, just like this. Oops, there's some felt down there. Right over your machine, just like this. And you can put your tools and your pens and everything in here. I've got my, uh, measuring tape in here and I have my extra large scraper in here. I sized the pocket so it would fit this perfectly. Um, a lot of people have made these, they're super cool. And one of the things that's cool is that not only is it a dust cover, but when you are finished or when you're using it, right? When you're using the machine, all you have to do is just kind of, normally my Cricut sits on a, um, on a surface, right? It doesn't actually sit on a big table like this is usually on a shelf. So you just, let me show you. You just lift it up and set your Cricut on it and your tools are usually hanging down below and you still have access to all of your stuff. And it's an under mat, under maker, under Cricut mat thing, right? Super cool, I really like this. I love this maker mat and you can make it any way you want. It is not difficult at all. Okay, let's talk about organizing your Cricut mats. So Cricut mats have a way of multiplying, don't they? I know that I like to buy new mats uh, when I'm doing projects because I like them so super sticky. So you're gonna need a place to keep your mats where they won't get dirty or bent. This is really important. The easiest place to store your mats is right under your Cricut. There are room for a few mats. They go right here. I keep a lot of mats right there. But eventually, I had too many mats to fit under my Cricut. 
So I bought an Alex unit from Ikea and I used the top drawer of the unit to store all my mats. My entire mat collection, in fact. But there's another idea, which is to put some 3M command hooks on the wall near your Cricut. And then you can just hang your mats up on the wall just like that so that you, because they have little holes at the top, so it's super easy to do that. Now, how do you organize all of your paper? I struggled with paper storage for a long time. For several months, I have an ed had an ever-growing pile of paper pads and loose sheets. And every time I pull one out, I would risk overturning the entire pile. It was not pretty. So finally, I made myself the paper tower of power. So this is my paper tower. It is an Ikea Calyx unit that I put wheels on the bottom of. And then I created these shelves which are just um, panel board and hot glue and trim trim strips right in here, right in here, see them all. And that's it, it's amazing. It is so, so helpful. So I can keep all of my paper in here organized by color. Um, it fits eight and a half by 11, which is what the, this is just the eight and a half by 11 size, but it also does the larger size. So down here I have a paper pad and you can put the whole pad in there, which I really like to do. This is not difficult or expensive to make. I have the complete plans to make this on my blog if you are interested. Um, I store, I also store some vinyl in here as well. Down here at the bottom, I have my sheet vinyl and I keep that in here, right? But let's talk about storing the rolls of vinyl because this, this is great for flat things, but you need to figure out where to put all of those rolls that you get of vinyl. Let me show you something else here. Pretty awesome, huh? So if you cut any vinyl, you're gonna need a way to store all of these rolls because this is how they come for the most part. Yes, you can get the flat sheets, uh, but mostly it's these rolls. So my solution is these three plastic units that I put onto a Lazy Susan. The plastic things are Ikea, Verrera, plastic bag dispensers, and they're only two to three dollars at Ikea. And you can fit three of them on a large Lazy, lazy Susan. And your rolls fit right into these these are uh, the holes of this thing and then I put this whole thing on top of my tower my paper tower it's like this is awesome so there's a lot of different ways a lot of different ways of storing and organizing your tools and supplies these are my personal ways chances are I will come up with even more ways and when I do I always share them on my blog and in my Facebook group so that we can all benefit from them um, but it's really, really very important. And that's why I put this in this lesson four, that because if you are disorganized and you lose your stuff, you don't know where it is, you can't craft. You spend an hour looking for your stuff and then you have no time to craft. So it's so important to keep your things organized, keep them where you can find them, ready to go when you're ready to go. So now I have a class exercise for you. Establish a place to store either your tools or your supplies. If you already have a place, get it tidied up and take a photo of it and share it in our Facebook group so we can see how you're organizing your things. Because not only do we want to see what you're doing, but it might inspire us to come up with an idea that will help our disorganization and our all of our stuff that needs to be sorted and stored to. And that's it for lesson four. So in our next lesson, I'm going to talk about my personal approach to Cricut success. And I want to show you how I'm able to use my Cricut whenever I need to, to make whatever I want to and have it work out. Maybe not right the first time, because come on, like, you know, I am notorious for having to do it many times, but that's okay. Um, the point is that I'm doing it. I'm doing it, I'm making stuff, and I'm happy with what I've made, and I want that for you too. So in our next lesson, we're gonna talk about strategies to Cricut success. Lots and lots of tips and tricks and all of my secrets, and I am happy to share them all with you. So until next time, bye.